I was asked this question several times. If you were limited to only one lens that you could take to a wedding as a wedding photographer, what lens would that be? Well, I got an answer for you. Hi guys, this is Vitaly with Touch Life Studio. This is the place where we talk weddings, photography, portraiture, camera, gear, and more. If you were recently got into weddings and portrait photography, and you are in pursuit of ultimate image quality, you might have heard of the trinity of lenses, such as wide-angle lens, 14 to 24 millimeters, standard zoom lens, 24 to 70 millimeters, and a telephoto zoom 70 to 200, and all of them are at f2.8. While all of these three lenses are used frequently, the 24 to 70 f2.8 is by far the most used lens in the lineup. This is the industry standard and for a number of reasons. The most obvious reason is because this lens covers the sweet spot of the zoom ranges of the most frequently used focal length by wedding and portrait photographers at a fast f2.8 constant aperture. Let me go over the important aspects of this lens and what makes this lens the most versatile or versatile and the number one selling lens among the wedding and portrait photographers. Widest aperture. The widest aperture of this lens is f2.8, which is one and one third step away from f1.8. For those who shot weddings in the past, you probably know how fast paced of an event this is. And switching lenses can be sometimes cumbersome. Plus, you need to carry multiple lenses with you. Now, the biggest advantage of this lens is that there are four lenses in one. Now, it's 24 millimeters, 35, 50 millimeters, and 70 millimeters. Now, I know 70 millimeters is not the most common focal length, but it is an extra reach, which is close to 85 millimeters, which is probably one of the most flattering focal length that exists. Yes, I know there are 105 and 135 and 200. However, the 85 f1.4 and 85 f1.2 is what remains the top wedding portrait lens. Now, back to 24 to 70. Mirrorless cameras and even DSLRs, primarily full-frame cameras, have an extended range for ISO. So shooting a wedding at f2.8 in dim environments is reasonable because uses its usable ISO range if clean photos is upwards of 6400. With the release of Z9, Canon R3, and Sony A1, the usable ISO range is even higher, upwards of 10,000 and 12,800 ISO. Certainly, there are many wedding and portrait photographers who shoot prime lenses only using 35 millimeters f1.8 and 85 f1.4 and f1.2. There are huge advantages with having such a low aperture number as it allows more light to the sensor and it gives the dreamy, creamy, bocalicious background. But please make no mistake, just because these low aperture lenses blur background, there's a lot more to a great photograph, such as scene, composition, lighting, and expressions. There are many studios that shoot at f5.6 and f8 indoors using strobes and speed lights. Some new photographers assume that <clears throat> having a low aperture lens, or some may refer as a fast lens, will make their photography amazing and will take them to a different level. But later they learn that shooting couples at, and families at f1.4, f1.8 does not work because while one or two people from a group shot are in focus, the rest of the group is out of focus, which ruins the shot. They raise their f-stop on the prime lenses from f1.8 to f4 and f5.6, and now they spend 800 and 1500 on just one prime lens just to shoot at f4 and f5.6. 
Don't get me wrong. There is an absolute place and time for prime lenses. And I shoot with prime lenses myself. But I'm a lot more strategic when I use prime lenses. And I usually know the look that I might be after and what environmental conditions warrant the low f-stop of f1.8 and f1.4. Now, several camera manufacturers produce 24 to 70 f2.8. Nikon, Canon, Sony, these are the major full-frame camera manufacturers. Although some people would argue that Sony is a consumer electronics company and not the real camera imaging company. Now, I will leave that pointless debate for another time. Cameras are cameras, right? Now, I have been a Nikon shooter for over a decade. The camera feels right in your hand. It produces stellar images. But if a consumer electronics company like Sony has been capable, capable to create a tool that produces fantastic images, more power to them. I love it. Now, let me briefly address <clears throat> the landscape and real estate photographers who might be interested in this lens. For some who shoots landscapes and is involved in real estate photography, this lens is absolute gem as well. In the past couple of years, Tamron came out with 28 to 75 f2.8 lens and just Nikon announced their version of the 28 to 75 f2.8, which took many by surprise, at about half the price of this lens. I will get into the price discussion just a little bit later on. And while this is a very close range, then probably meets the needs of 50% plus of general photographers, four millimeters of focal range can make a big difference. Maybe not so much for landscape photography as usually there is enough room to move back a few feet. In real estate, four millimeters can make a huge difference because one may not have enough room to step back due to a wall, staircase or some object that would prevent the photographer to move back. The upper limits of <clears throat> 70 millimeters versus 75 is not so much of a concern as usually there's a room to step forward for some with the 70 millimeter to get a little bit more reach. Now, I humbly admit that I'm not a landscape or real estate photographer. And if you are, and I'm totally mistaken, please let me know in the comments below what focal length lens that you use the most and why. The YouTube community would greatly appreciate your info. Back to 24 to 70 and now for video. For someone who does video, this, is le this lens is fantastic. This lens covers the basics without switching lenses, from wide establishing shots that sets the scene, to medium shots that highlight the subject, to tight close-ups that reveal the details at an all-beautiful f2.8 aperture. The lens has built-in VR, which is vibration reduction image stabilization technology. It reduces camera shake and vibration up to five stops. When combined with the full frame Z Nikon mirrorless cameras, such as Z6, Z7, now Z9, camera sharp, steady handheld stills and videos and shoot at slower shutter speed in low light situations without sacrificing sharpness. Now, 24 to 70 is the sweet spot of the zoom range for many photographers. Great for everything from landscapes and studio work to weddings and press events, the f2.8 constant aperture allows for faster shutter speed to freeze fast action, renders a beautiful bokeh blur and performs brilliantly in low light. Now let's discuss the price. The lens cost about 23 US, 2300 US dollars. You might be able to catch a sale around winter holiday season and get this lens for about 2000 US dollars. In any case, this lens is not cheap. But given the versatility of this lens, buying even three lenses, three lenses as 24 f1.8 at $1,000, 35mm at f1.8 at $850, and a 50mm f1.8 at $600 will run you upwards nearly 
100 US dollars. As you can see, the cost of these three lenses alone is higher than just this one 24-70 f2.8. Yes, you have advantage of the lower f-stop numbers, but as a wedding and portrait photographer who does run and gun shooting, you will quickly find, find out how frequently one needs to step down in f number to get the subjects in focus faces, objects, background, foreground. Now, alternatives to this native lens. If the cost of this native lens is out of reach for you, but you are greatly interested in the 24-70 f2.8 lens, there are third-party alternatives for you, such as Tamron and Sigma 24-70 f2.8 at roughly half the price of the native 24-70 lens. Now, I'm fully admitting <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of primes, prime lenses, but if you want to appreciate the full versatility of this lens and you are not sure whether you want to drop that much cash on this lens alone, my advice, rent one and try for yourself. I don't want you to get in debt, run your credit card high to purchase this lens because you might be feeling pers persuaded. Rent it and see for yourself whether this lens is for you. There is a reason <clears throat> why wedding and portrait photographers have been using this focal range lens for years. Versatility and image quality is the name of the game. For those who have been using this lens for a while, please share in the comments below and let me know your experience using this lens. So, to answer the initially stated question, if you were limited to only one lens that you could take to a wedding as a wedding photographer, what lens would that be? Well, the answer is 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8. With just the prime lenses such as 35 f1.8 and you would miss on medium shots and close-up shots. With just 50 millimeter f1.8, one would miss on establishing shots and close-up shots. And with just 85 millimeters f1.8, one would miss on establishing shots and medium shots. As you can see, for many wedding photographers, 24 to 70 lens covers all of those bases and therefore is a go-to lens. If you found this content informative and entertaining, I would love to know whether you like it by hitting the like button below. And consider subscribing if this is something that you are into, which will tell me that you like the video so that I can make more content like this for viewers like you. Thank you.